So what's up guys, I'm finally back with a new video, but not with the tutorial I intended to post today because I didn't quite finish. You could probably guess what it will be, so I think it's going to be pretty cool, it's just not quite finished yet. So today um, I'm going to split this video to two parts. I'm going to announce a Halloween challenge that we came up with on Discord, but before that I'm going to teach you something so you don't feel like I wasted your time all over the whole video, just half of the video. Uh, so you're gonna learn a little bit about global colors and style guides and why that's important. So we're just gonna jump right into Blender. So let's create, uh, I don't know, four monkey heads. Um, we're gonna all make them a little bit smooth so that they look nice. We're gonna add a material each. So each monkey head will get one material. So I'm gonna open up the shader window go to like EV render material preview. Uh, so I can turn this red, I can turn this red as well. I can turn this green, I can copy the green, bring over the green, you know, like how this works. And of course I could use one material and so on. But let's say this is a green metallic by a certain brand or chrome. This is also green um, rough metallic. And this is also green but it's i don't know maybe some green skin okay you can't really see in the material preview and this is some i don't know maybe i did one material too many let's say this is a car paint yeah so these are all green but they're not any green most clients will give you a style guide so we will follow that style guide so i downloaded just one from the internet uh just like a template style guide but this is how they usually look tell you about how the spacing of the logos where you can put logos what font to use and colors of course and sometimes also way more complex than that so what we have here are four colors so let's say the client has like this scene, this infographic or whatever with all kinds of materials and they want to follow the purple. So I could add purple and you know, I can add it to the rest. But now the question is, how do I change this color globally? So what you could do, so the easiest way, so what I always do is just create a um, RGB. You can hook it up and group it and turn it red and then reuse this group in all materials so hook it up and as you can see if we go in here we've got a global color so this is the most basic way of dealing with that so you can select this and all the different materials have the same color and not just the same color they have the uh, the style guide color and what you can also do per material so let's say this metallic is a bit brighter then you can just add a you can add a lot of things, but let's say a curve modifier, make it a little brighter and less saturated like this. And still, if we change the color, it's going to follow up the same style. So this works very well. And uh, what we're going to do next is basically a way to switch between multiple colors easily because you don't always want to use the color picker and break all your materials. So we're going to create a material that you can switch the color. Let's say we're going to use a uh, five colors or I don't know why I just created another monkey. So we're going to use five global colors. So we're going to create a RGB, going to create three, uh, four, five. So this is going to be our blue. This is going to be our purple. This is going to be our green. This is going to be our orange or whatever that color is. Oh, I mix, missed one. Uh, this is going to be our, or actually, switch these around make this black so so one last thing we're going to need is just the value so this is what we're going to use to switch uh the colors so this is going to be our switcher so first uh what we're going to do is actually round this switcher because as you know uh this has all the numbers but we don't want all the numbers we want numbers like one two three four five so we're going to round this not clamp we're going to round it and then <coughs> we're going to get another math node and we're going to subtract by one. Very important. Don't miss this step. We will throw in a mix shader, RGB, not mix shader, RGB mix shader, or I guess it's a, I guess they're both a mix shader in a way, but we're mixing RGB. Uh, and we will mix the, uh, so this is going to be our factor. Then we're going to mix the first two colors, just like this. So it looks like this. Probably follow it along. So I'm going to copy the mix shader, we're going to mix 
these two, so the first two and the third together, and our factor is going to be another subtraction by one. Oh, that was bad. Like this. That was bad again. Like this, and we will hook up our subtraction here, just like this. So this is basically our tree. We're going to follow along. So now we're going to get another subtraction. We're going to get another mix. So we're mixing in all the colors we have. So the first three and the fourth. And now we will use subtraction once again, <coughs> just like this. And then we will mix it up. We will subtract it up. We will use this as a factor. Once again, just like this, all the colors together. We got all these four and one plus our last color. And now we can finally hook this up to the color and we got blue. And if I turn this up past two, so one is blue, two is pink and three and so on. So now we can just set our colors. So now we're just going to group up the whole thing. So move the value a little bit away because we're going to need this. We're going to group everything except the value that I just moved away. We can delete this value. So now we're just going to call this global color or whatever. I'm just going to copy it in here. You could give it a color. We, I just usually make it black. So I see right away this is my node. Uh, then we're just going to, you can turn it to three or whatever. And then we can copy it over to the other materials, hook it up. And we can say four, so there's a different color. And now we can throw it in here. And uh, also maybe, yeah, also leave it on three for now to show you one last final example, even though you probably got the point by now. Um, so if I go in here with tab and I change our green, let's say the client doesn't like the green anymore and I don't know, likes this weird pink suddenly, then you just color pick this weird pink and everything fits. So this is how you can work with a global color palette and easily access your colors. You could also name this stuff. Um, so yeah. So I hope you learned something about style guides and global colors. Now we're gonna go to the announcement because of course it's Halloween almost and we thought we could do like some kind of a challenge or something, I don't know. So what we came up with is until the, uh, where's the date? Until the 5th of November, you can apply to this challenge and you're going to apply by going to Discord and posting your render into the Halloween special channel. So not too hard. And what the challenge is, is rendering a pumpkin. So we thought it was funny because usually you carve pumpkins in real life and you probably might do that anyways. But still, we thought it would be funny if we all carve pumpkins together in Blender and then share it on the Discord. And then me and Nico are gonna rate all the pumpkins by cleanness, so how professional uh, the whole render is, like how well it's done, how good the texturing lighting is so on a professional side of view. Uh, the next view, uh, the next critique um, topic, I guess, is creativity. So how creative is the whole composition and everything or the whole image. Uh, the third one is memes. <clears throat> so is the render funny or hilarious? And the last one is the overall spit. So we're just gonna cover it with a fresh layer of spit and just have a general feeling about the render. So each of these four categories will have five points each or stars or whatever. We're gonna add them up. Who has the most stars won. So the cool thing I think about this challenge is anyone can win because if it's just super funny or super creative, you can win. Um, so anyone can win. It's just going to be a fun little challenge. Um, and what you can win, you're probably asking now. So I don't have much to uh, give away. But what I do have uh, are the t-shirts. So there's still some t-shirts left. Um, and I'm going to give away one for free to the winner. So I think that's a cool prize, I guess. So that's it. So just post your pumpkins. Um, have fun doing it. That's the most important part about this challenge. It should completely just be about fun. And yeah, the winner gets a t-shirt. So I think that's going to be cool as well. So that's it for today. Upcoming tutorial, I think is going to be pretty cool. So look forward for that. Otherwise, goodbye and happy Halloween probably. Bye.